Hi LEGO fans! Can you tell what it is yet? Yes, it's a big pile of Hogwarts coloured LEGO bricks, which means Jeremy's been buying stuff on eBay again. A couple of weeks ago, I reviewed set number 4842, Hogwarts Castle from 2010. I mentioned at the time that that set had an expansion pack. If you don't recognise it from this big pile of pieces, then this may help you. It's time for another classic Harry Potter set, and today I'm going to be speed building and reviewing set number 4867, Hogwarts from LEGO Harry Potter. This 466 piece set was released in 2010 in what was quite a sparse year for LEGO Harry Potter. In fact, apart from polybags and the Harry Potter Years 5-7 game, we only got four sets. 4865 The Forbidden Forest, 4866 The Night Bus, 4867 Hogwarts, which we'll be building in just a minute, and my absolute favourite, the 10217 Diagon Alley. I know you guys are desperate to see a review of this bad boy, and it is coming up soon. Getting back to 4867 Hogwarts, the 466 piece part count includes seven minifigures. We do of course have Harry James Potter, who appears in seven sets and is worth about two dollars. We also have a Dementor, which matches the two we got in set number 4842. These are a little bit rarer, and they're worth about nine dollars. Next we have Lucius Malfoy, who appears in three sets, and he's worth about three dollars. Neville Longbottom is an exclusive to this set, and he's worth about eight dollars. Also exclusive is Professor Remus Lupin, who's worth about $7. The same goes for Professor Pomona Sprout, the Herbology teacher. She's exclusive to this set and sells for about $7. Finally, we have one of Malfoy's friends, who is definitely not the sharpest tool in the box. This is Gregory Goyle in his Slytherin uniform, and he's worth about $4. We'll be taking a close-up look at all of these minifigures later in the video. Back in 2011, this retailed for about 50 Great British Pounds or 50 US Dollars. If you have one of these mint in box, it's worth about $180, or used like this about $54. I bought this on eBay and I paid $45, including shipping. It was described as used and complete, but the buyer did say to check the photos. The most important part for me is that all the minifigures are here, and the instructions are a bonus. I'm going to go ahead and build 4867 Hogwarts, and today this is going to be a 60 second speed build! And here is the completed 4867 Hogwarts from LEGO Harry Potter! Build time today was about 60 minutes, and it was pretty straightforward to put together. For the most part, those two towers are very, very similar builds. For a relatively modest $50 set with 466 pieces, this has an impressive set of seven minifigures with four exclusives. We're going to be taking a close-up look at those a little bit later in the video. We'll even be exposing Lucius Malfoy as the Death Eater that he is. Before then, we're going to explore this Hogwarts set, check out some action features, and given that this is effectively an expansion pack for the 4842 set, we're going to join them all together and see how they look combined. Before we get started, I do want to give you some context on the 2010 and 2011 LEGO Harry Potter waves. Effectively, LEGO split what could have been a complete wave for the Deathly Hallows book. The movie version, just like Voldemort's soul, was split into pieces. We had Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 in 2010, and of course LEGO released a bunch of sets. The second wave in 2011 was much smaller, and featured some references to Deathly Hallows Part 2. Set number 4865, The Forbidden Forest, recreates the showdown between Harry Potter and Lord Voldemort in the final movie. With the minifigures removed, we can take a closer look at this rather nice set. It consists of an almost identical pair of towers, which are designed to fit in with the 4842 Hogwarts set. These are connected to a decorative viaduct using a pivot point on each tower. 
It would have been cool if the two halves of the tower had folded together, but in reality it doesn't work like that. What you can do is to remove the towers altogether. You might want to take a little bit more care over that than I did. Now we have three distinct and separate components which you could use to customise your 4842 Hogwarts castle. Or at least that's what LEGO's marketing people would like you to do. As I mentioned before, the towers are very similar but not identical. I actually really like these, especially with the impressive symmetry. Each one has connection points on the right hand side and also on the left hand side. There's also a bunch of cool stuff on the inside, but trust me we'll get to that in a moment. The pair of towers sit on identical rocky outcrops. I like the way these neatly wrap around the outside of the tower using pivot points. Given the very wet location of Hogwarts Castle, it's no surprise to see mossy growths on the rocks, and additional lime green growths tucked away underneath the foundations. The exterior of the first level of these towers is identical. Well, apart from some suspect stickering, of course. The stickers are actually really effective so long as you put them on straight. We also have these small arched windows which match the 4842 set perfectly. Architectural details up on the next level do differ with the right hand tower having a more open look and feel. The striking sand green roofs are definitely an unusual colour choice. This colour has been synonymous with LEGO Harry Potter since 2001. In fact the 4867 Hogwarts set is the last Hogwarts to have green roofs. After this we have a 7 year gap until Hogwarts Great Hall in 2018 which has a grey roof. So with all the boring architectural stuff covered, let's take a look around inside. Both of these towers have 3 levels of living accommodation and then a dark dingy basement. Both of the subterranean rooms are empty with the exception of this one which has a green Lego snake. I do like to think of this as Nagini and she's gonna have to watch out for Neville. Up on the next level we have one of the Gryffindor dormitories complete with double bunks. The colour theming is perfect with Gryffindor gold and maroon. Whether this is the boys or the girls dormitory it's impossible to say. But given that we got Gryffindor common room in the 4842 set it's really nice to have the dormitory in this set. I'll ignore the fact that they should both be in Gryffindor tower of course. Moving up to the next level we have a large open area near the top of the tower. It's likely this is meant to represent the astronomy tower and up here you'll find an interesting looking globe. It's clearly not a globe of the earth and I think it may be a globe of the moon. You can buy something just like this at Wiseacres Wizarding Equipment in Diagon Alley for a cost of 13 galleons. The globe itself is made from two printed hemispheres which snap around a monochrome minifigure head wearing a hat. There's no specific reason for this unusual core, it just holds everything together nicely. Finally in the roof space at the top of the first tower we have this unusual looking classroom. I wasn't really sure what this was meant to be but as soon as I started filming the mists cleared and it all became apparent. This of course is the divination classroom. Everything you could need for prophesizing the future is here. We've got a crystal ball and two teacups for reading the tea leaves. It's just a shame that we don't have a misty eyed Sybil Trelawney to lead the lesson. Moving on to the next tower we have another four rooms to explore. The basement level is completely empty so that's going to save us some time. The next level up is also conspicuously empty. There's plenty of space here to put something inside but the designers just did not bother. We do however have some wizarding art with this girl wizard over on the left and a slightly older male wizard casting a spell over on the right. Apart from that this level is a pretty much pointless echo chamber. On reaching the third level things get a little bit more interesting. The only thing I can't figure out is if this is meant to be the potions laboratory or the defense against the dark arts class. I tried studying the cryptic messages on the blackboard but all I can glean from this is that it's something that makes people die. Honestly that could be potions or defense against the dark arts. There is a chair here so maybe it's an office and not a classroom. It could even be Slughorn's office although we don't get a Slughorn minifigure. Peering into the back of the room we do have some interesting looking artifacts including a couple of potion bottles and a very friendly looking skull. Finally at the very top of the tower we have another roof space which is being used to hide a magical artifact. This is of course the mirror of Erised and as you probably know Erised is desire written backwards. It's a very old magical object which shows the deepest most desperate desire of our hearts. Men have wasted away before it not knowing if what they've seen is real or even possible. The decorative detail at the top is pretty authentic but I did have to use my own parts to recreate it. Thankfully the vast majority of pieces in this set were present and correct. 
I remember looking at this set and the 4842 Hogwarts set side by side in Toys R Us back in 2011. It was just before Christmas and I was making a decision on what to buy my son. Ultimately I decided that this version of Hogwarts was a dumbed down version of the 4842 version. Little did I know at the time that they were meant to be used together. I'll be reuniting this with the 4842 set in just a moment. But before we do, I see a bridge over troubled water. Like a lot of LEGO Hogwarts sets, it's difficult to relate this directly to the Hogwarts we saw in the movie. I'm thinking this is the bridge where Harry stood and destroyed the Elder Wand at the end of the Battle of Hogwarts. The observant among you may have noticed there's a dial at the back of the bridge. If we turn this, cool stuff happens. Harry's looking pissed and I think Gregory Goyle and Lucius Malfoy could be in trouble. Confringo! It's a very simple mechanism using basic engineering principles to dislodge some plates that are stacked loosely on top. We have rails on either side of the bridge on which we can loosely lay the plates. And then underneath we have a rotating cam mechanism which simply pushes the plates out of place. So that was the 4867 Towers and Bridge and we are going to connect those up with the 4842 Hogwarts Castle. That's coming up in just a few minutes but before then let's take a look at these 7 fantastic minifigures. While the castle itself may not be that impressive, the collection of minifigures certainly is. For a 466 piece set which only cost $50 when it came out, the selection of minifigures is outstanding. We have Herbology Professor Pomona Sprout, Dark Arts Professor and member of the Order of Phoenix Remus Lupin, Neville Longbottom, Lucius Malfoy, Gregory Goyle, Harry James Potter and a dastardly Dementor. So this is Herbology teacher and head of Hufflepuff house, Professor Pomona Sprout. She is dressed from head to toe in this dark tan uniform and she's wearing this rather elegant skirt piece. This is really nicely printed. We've got kind of a, an open flap at the front here and then pockets on the front there with almost like flower decorations which are quite appropriate for a Herbology teacher. The torso print is also very nice, very rustic and um, yeah, I'm guessing there are some seeds and uh, maybe some, yeah, there leaves there so very appropriate for a herbology teacher and around the back we do have some more printing uh, which just shows the kind of um, ruffles in the outfit here or in the robes she is wearing a matching hat this is a standard witch's hat element from harry potter and it is in this rather nice dark tan color but then we have a facial expression which is very much like uh, pomona sprout yet very kindly uh, i like the wrinkles around the eyes which gives her a really kind look and that is an awesome and exclusive this is the only version of professor pomona sprout you'll find as a minifigure so far and uh, yeah she's great next and wearing a similar dark tan uniform is professor remus john lupin order of merlin first class his nickname was of course mooney and that was because of his tendency to howl at the full moon of course remus was a werewolf after being attacked by fenrir greyback as a child he is afflicted with lycanthropy he is dressed in a pretty simple outfit here. We've got these plain full-size dark tan legs and then a printed torso which shows his jacket. Plenty of pockets there, very stylish. And then a shirt and tie. Turning him over, we've got just a little bit of creasing on the back there for the uh, back of the jacket. And then we have a great facial expression. In fact, I'm going to take the hair off so we can have a closer look. And what you can see immediately is that he has a scratch and more scratches across his face, which is, of course, from where he was attacked by Fenrir Greyback as a child. He also has um, a kind of moustache and beard here. Those are in a kind of ginger colour. And if we bring back the hair, I don't recall Remus having uh, red hair. Um, probably more kind of reddish brown. So I don't know if the colour is quite right, but certainly it looks good. I like the hair piece. It's got some great style to it. And that is a really nice Remus John Lupin minifigure. This is one of four minifigures and we actually got a micro figure in set number 71043, the awesome Hogwarts Castle. Next we have Herbology enthusiast Neville Longbottom who was son of Frank and Alice. They were members of the original Order of the Phoenix but lost their minds when they were tortured into insanity by the Death Eaters. Poor little Neville was only about 16 months old at the time uh, but he does grow up into quite a handsome chap I believe uh, my wife tells me very regularly. Um, he is wearing a really nice outfit here. Um, we have the plain black full length legs on there but then we have this really nice torso. So what we have here is a kind of 
knitted cardigan with a very detailed pattern. Um, underneath we've got a blue shirt and you can see, um, yeah, you can see it's Adam's apple there, which is quite unusual for a Lego minifigure. Around the back we get a closer look at that pattern, which I believe is a fair isle pattern. I think this comes from one of the Scottish Highland Islands. Um, but then we also have a hood on the back there. Looks really warm and comfy. Um, the facial expression is really good for Neville. I'm going to take off that hair for just a moment. Very confident here with the kind of um, confident smile and a little dimple on the side there. And then around the back, we've got a rather more, yeah, this is the more goofy Neville Longbottom with the funny teeth that we kind of know and love. Let's just put the hair on there so we can take a look at that expression. Yeah, that's great. Definitely Neville. And the hair is a pretty, I think that's a pretty generic Lego hair mold there. But that is you know, quite a rare minifigure, uh, certainly one of the more valuable minifigures from this set, but he does appear as three minifigures in total. I think we've got uh, one in the collectible minifigure series, and then there was another one, I can't remember what set it was in. Oh, it was probably one of the 2018 or 19 sets, but that's Neville Longbottom, very cool minifig. This is one of three minifigure recreations of Lucius Malfoy, who was the father of Draco and the grandfather to Scorpius Malfoy. You might remember him from the Deathly Hallows Part 2. You know that scene right at the end where everybody's grown up, looks a bit haggard, and Ron's put on a bunch of weight. Lucius was, of course, a Death Eater, and we'll see evidence of that in just a second, uh, but he is dressed in his typical black robes here. We've got the black legs, which are movable, and uh, these are not printed. These are standard Lego legs. And then we have the front of his robes here. Underneath we've got green, um, I guess a green vest. There's also a tie with a little bit of metallics on there. And then this kind of clasp which keeps the robes together. Really nice printing here. The green is actually quite appropriate because Malfoy was a Slytherin prefect when he was at Hogwarts. And um, yeah, other things, he's got one of these papery capes and there is no printing around the back. Trust me, I've checked. I don't need to take him apart to see. The facial expression is quite regal, quite self-important. And then if we turn this around, he becomes a Death Eater. We also have, for Lucius, a mask uh, or a hood, I guess. This was actually missing from the set, but thankfully I have extensive parts and I was able to find one of these quite easily. The print is actually very, very detailed. Let me just try and show that to you a little bit closer. Really nice metallics there showing the Death Eater's mask, really quite sinister. Going back to the original expression, yeah, there he is. Um, yeah, typical Malfoy snarl. And then we have this very elegant L'Oreal styled hair, very blonde, runs down the back of his, uh, his body here, about halfway down his back, really nice long hair. And that is an awesome Lucius Malfoy. Staying with the Slytherin theme, we have Gregory Goyle, who was half of the double act that was Crabbe and Goyle. They were, of course, Draco Malfoy's lackeys and did his bidding. He is dressed here in a Slytherin uniform. We've got the plain black legs on here, no printing. And then we've got a really nicely printed Slytherin uniform. We've got some metallic details down there around the bottom of the jumper. And then we've got the Slytherin logo, which again, if you can see it flickering in the light, has the snake with the the, um, yeah, the metallic silver on there. We also have some metallic silver on the tie for the stripes, which is really nice. Around the back, a little bit more printing there. We've got the creases in the back of the school jumper, and then some more metallic printing there, which really shows up nicely in the light. The facial expression is pretty typical, what you'd expect to see from a thug like Gregory Goyle. Uh, his parents were Death Eaters, and it's not known whether Gregory Goyle became a Death Eater, but certainly he disappeared sometime after the uh, Wizarding War. He has this kind of uh, flat top haircut here. Quite an unusual um, hairstyle there from Lego. Uh, no printing around the back, but then we do have that facial expression. Uh, he's got a face only a mother could love. Very uh, pointy eyebrows there, and then a kind of um, creases around the mouth, and then these pig-like eyes. He's not a very attractive little minifigure, but that is the awesome Gregory Goyle. 
It will come as no surprise that Harry James Potter is by far the most common and least valuable minifigure in this set. In fact, there are about 39 minifigures of Harry Potter so far, and uh, this one is a good example. He's dressed in his Gryffindor school uniform here. We've got the plain black legs, which are full size. We don't get the uh, shorter legs until later. And then we've got the Gryffindor print top here. This is quite common. It comes with uh, a number of the Gryffindor students uh, in sets that came out in around 2010. 10, 2011. Uh, very similar to the uniform that uh, Goyle was wearing. We've got some metallic details here along the bottom of the Gryffindor sweater and then the Gryffindor house crest which is kind of awkwardly placed there on the side. Um, yeah there is limited real estate here for printing. Uh, we do of course have the shirt and tie underneath with the Gryffindor colours of kind of maroon and gold and very similarly around the back we've got a nice metallic stripe and then some creases for the back of the jumper. The facial expression in the hair is pretty much what you'd expect to see from Harry James Potter. Very shaggy. And then we've got a kind of, uh, yeah, that, actually that's a smile, smiley expression there. Great. And then we've got the uh, lightning shaped scar, which I always think is slightly out of place. It should be more towards the, uh, the right hand side of the forehead. And over around the back, we have a more determined expression. This would be about the time. This would be about the time when Harry is fighting Voldemort for his life. So yeah, he's going to look pretty determined. And uh, yeah, that is a very nice but um, very very common Harry Potter minifigure. And finally for the minifigures from this set, we have a Dementor. This is a gliding wrath-like dark creature, widely considered to be one of the foulest inhabitants of the world. And these things are pretty mean. You don't want to get too near to one of these. Otherwise, you might get a kiss you might regret. Um, this thing is standing on one of these um, kind of transparent dishes here, which gives the illusion that it's floating in the air, when of course it's not. Underneath, we have this kind of skeleton, which is uh, really cool. We've got legs which clip onto the pelvis here and when I've had these in the past my original 4842 set these clips do tend to snap so you do have to treat them with a little bit of care we've then got the arms which can kind of protrude out from underneath the spooky gown here the gown is particularly nice all the robes they are tattered as you can see it's a really nice soft material and it makes it hang really nicely over the Dementor this is a really nice version of the Dementor and probably one of my favorite of the three different types we have in Lego Harry Potter sets. The face isn't really a face, we just have a mouth exposed under there which is ready to give the Dementors kiss and then around the back we just have some more printing there for the sculpturing of the uh, the skull. I guess it could be flesh hanging off but it does have this kind of you know grey clammy exterior with no eyes and then we have another one of these hoods just like the one that came with Malfoy. Uh, really nice these Dementor minifigures and a great addition to both the 4842 and the 4867 sets. So you saw the 4842 Hogwarts castle in my previous video and now we've had a chance to look at the 4867 Hogwarts expansion pack. Shall we put them both together? Well I think it would be rude not to. I didn't get a chance to do this back in 2011 but now we can finally pull together the 4842 and 4867 sets to make this fantastic green roofed Bayer Moth. I kept the 4867 set together and built the other parts around it. But you could easily break up the three component parts and make your own Hogwarts layout. Of course this looks nothing like the Hogwarts we know and love in the movies, but it does make a very neat Lego Harry Potter display. And best of all if you spin it around, there are a bunch of interior features where you can recreate scenes from the various Harry Potter movies. There's no doubt the 4842 Hogwarts Castle set is the superior set of the two, but combined these make a really nice Harry Potter themed Lego playset. And collectively between the two sets there is an absolutely fantastic array of Harry Potter minifigures. So if you have the 4842 Hogwarts Castle set and you were thinking about getting the 4867 pack to go with it, I would heartily recommend it for the minifigures alone. I'm certainly very pleased and feel very fortunate to be able to add the 4867 Hogwarts set to my Harry Potter collection. I'm just going to have to find a bigger house to store all of this stuff. So that was set number 4867, Hogwarts from Lego Harry Potter. It's taken me almost a decade to finally add this to my collection, but I am very pleased with this little eBay find. It might not be the cheapest way to get these classic LEGO Harry Potter sets, but if you shop wisely, it can be quite an economical investment. 
I had a great time reassembling 4867 Hogwarts and I hope you enjoyed this classic Lego Harry Potter speed build and review video. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome Lego Harry Potter content. You'll find many, many more LEGO Harry Potter reviews on my channel, including the 4842 castle you see before you now. Next week's video will be on a different theme, and if you're a soccer fan, it might be something you'll enjoy. In the meantime, I'm going to start work on the next classic LEGO Harry Potter video, and I think it could be time for a little bit of wizard shopping. So thanks a million for checking out today's review, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next build video.